I'd be on Azans like and be driving on the, on the highway. Like, might doze off one time. When I look back, it's like, nigga, I should be dead. Like, real talk. Like, I shouldn't even be alive right now. Like, all this shit, all, all that shit. Hip-hop and music have always been tied into drugs. The rappers are the new rock stars. In the 90s, them niggas was geeked up. They were smoking crack back then, you know what I'm saying? Now it's pills, it's lean. I feel like my generation, I don't care what you say, like we're getting high. You guys wanted to be all prideful about it back in the days, we not gonna be prideful about it. We just gonna be blunt honest, whether you like it or not. This generation's affinity for Xanax is no different than previous generation's affinity for LSD or heroin. You know, it makes sense because hip hop comes from a place of pain and Xanax is something that numbs your emotions and it can numb that pain. Benzodiazepines are a class of drug and they're, they're called minor tranquilizers. And that sort of says it all. It's a central nervous system suppressor. So it slows down all these basic functions we have like breathing like heart rate. If you are using benzodiazepines for a few weeks, they're gonna help you manage anxiety, fears, panic. But once you start using it on the long term, once you're using it, mixing it with other drugs or with alcohol, then it becomes a really dangerous uh, proposition. I've had anxiety issues. So I started taking Xanax when I was 17 years old and I almost crashed this girl's car. I was falling asleep in the studio. I just felt slow and empty inside, and so I never really pursued it. I done seen people go to sleep, crash a car, like get robbed, like people in their pockets and shit, and woke up and didn't, ever, and didn't remember. It's boomed since like I started taking it. You know, I, I'm fully sober now often. I'm, I'm really happy about that. And I started taking it because I, I didn't like flying. And my girl was like, oh, you should try this. And then from there, you know, just like spiraled out of control. You don't feel like you're an addict because you're just taking it as a prescription. Like, oh, okay, I'm gonna take my one milligram today. Oh, now today I need two milligrams. So a lot of people do take Xanax to deal with something they're facing. So they have a fear of flying, they have a fear of heights. Not only is it physically addictive, but as it helps you deal with that anxiety, it feels good. And, and it's a relief to you. So of course you're going to want to take that. And then the physical addiction can set in. I was taking eight, like a day, eight of them. And that shit to me, eight was one. And then I was on that shit for like two years, <laughs> like just wilding out, like I'm wild, wilding out, like wilding out for a lot. I was, I was tripping, like tripping, like. I remember when one of the homies was like really, really, really hooked on Xanax. Like I'm popping like four or five bars with him. I would wake up the next day and I wouldn't feel sick. Then I started to realize that I didn't remember like a whole year of my life. Like I only remember like six months of like 2015. And that's just me being 100% honest with you. You feel like Superman on it, like, cause I'm normally very anxious. So when you take it, it's like, excuse me, get out of my way. Sorry, pardon me, move, move. Like, you know, cause like, you feel like nobody can stop you. I think hip hop is, starting to accept mental health care or just mental health issues as being okay to talk about and okay to recognize. Hip hop is a reflection of the community and the black community has stigmatized mental health for a long time. I think we have culturally sanctioned ways that we address our mental health issues. It's not socially acceptable to go to a mental health provider. Perhaps it's why you see folks turn to substances in lieu of going to a professional to address um, those issues related to mental illness. You see a lot of minorities like doing drugs, but like I'm gonna be real with you, I, my whole life, like, I only saw like, you know what I mean, like white America doing pills. So like none of my homies around were doing that. So when I started doing that, it was kind of like a foreign language at first. Some of the uh, stereotypes and images often portray African Americans, particularly in impoverished communities, as high abusers of substances. More white youth are actually abusing drugs or drinking at higher levels than African American youth. 
social media is the key to the key of my anxiety. It makes my anxiety go up way raises. I just don't go on it. You heard Wu Tang rap about putting crack in blunts, but they didn't have Instagrams. So you see these kids taking pictures with Xanax on their tongue like Lil Peep and then passing away. It just hits you in a different way because you're watching it and you're connecting before it was just lyrics. I think there's incredible dissonance that teenagers experience on a daily basis between who am I as a person and what do I have to show to the world? I think what we don't think about as much is what that dissonance between your inner reality and this outer reality you're creating, how much dissonance that causes. Because how do you really tell the difference after a while? Someone make me out to be something and the whole masses are saying this like, well, I'm gonna play my role, I'm gonna play my character and I'm gonna do it the best. Like, if I'm the villain, I'm the best villain. You want me to be a hero, I'll be the best hero. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, you want me to be a drug addict, I'll be the best drug addict. Be whatever the, my fans want me to be, you know what I'm saying? One day I was laying down with my girl and she used to always tell me and it never registered in my head. She used to be like, I fuck with you, I don't fuck with Wi Fi's funeral. I'm like, bro, who the, like, who the fuck is Wi Fi's funeral and who the fuck is Isaiah's? And then I saw all this shit that I did while being Wi-Fi's funeral. And I'm like, this makes perfect sense. To sit down and try to be something that you're trying to portray yourself as, that shit's not normal. You get almost obsessive with the thought and you feel like that's how you have to be in order to evolve from point A to B. That shit's not human-like at all. So the shirt said, how much Zans and lean do you have to do before you realize you're a fucking loser? So listen, my thing was, I was never shitting on you going through something. I'm not saying depression isn't real. I'm not saying none of that isn't real. They weren't mad that I was attacking what they were going through. They were mad that I was attacking their image that they're trying to uphold to their fans. When you're doing like skits on Instagram about your drug abuse, I know you are posting it on Instagram and doing that shit because it gets more clicks than your song. I'm not slow. It's like people like Russ, bro. Oh, fucking forgive me, bro. That I decide to talk about fucking Xanax and lean and this and this and that because I don't know, maybe I've been a fucking drug addict my whole life. How the fuck you expect me to talk about something positive if my whole life has been nothing but negativity? Some of these niggas just do that shit and be like, oh, you're a fucking loser. Like, it's like, yo, my nigga, shut your bitch ass up, nigga. Like, what you mean? You, like, like, you don't know what certain people be going through. Like, of course, I get the message and 100% I agree with it. Let's not have everybody drug the fuck up, but go about it in the right way, man. See, I can't judge nobody. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I do like perks. So I can't be sitting up at 12. So don't fuck on those hands that then be on Instagram next week off a of perk. Like, it don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? That's why you just got to tell the truth and just speak how you, your situation. You know what I'm saying? It ain't for you to bash nobody. On September 7th, 2018, the world lost Mac Miller at just 26 years old. Friends, family, fans, and the music community at large all grieved the loss of his incredible talent and his light. When you mix drugs, it's toxic. You're gonna die, straight up. That's what it is, I can't sugarcoat it. When you're mixing a bunch of different drugs, you will die at some point. They, it's gonna catch up to you, it's gonna get you. If you combine benzos with other types of drugs, like opioids, like alcohol, that are, again, central nervous system depressors, what happens? You're getting these synergistic effects and your slowed breathing, your slowed heart rate now can send you into a respiratory emergency. You can go into a coma and you can die. And that's how people overdose. When Pete died, people wanted to bash him and be like, oh, we need to stop doing drugs. Da 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 But when niggas was smoking woolies and playing crack in their blunts and doing this and doing that, we wasn't saying that. So what the fuck is the problem now? Oh, why? Because it's more vivid? Because a younger person did it? But nah, nobody wants to say something until a kid does something. You have these pharmaceutical companies that are making billions of dollars by addicting people to drugs. And the fingers don't really get pointed at them. The fingers get pointed at the kids using the drugs, but somebody's gotta, somebody's gotta make the drugs. They're there to do what they were built to do, what they were designed to do. The drugs are there to numb and to addict. The ability to make a dollar 
is more valuable in American society than anything else, and definitely more valuable than public health of the people. At the end of the day, it's about money through whoever. If you promote his hands and they making money off of it, they're not gonna tell you stop. They really don't get no fuck. Our, our brothers and sisters uh, that are in the, the hip hop game gives kids greater proximity to the issues. You know, it can be a powerful tool to educate, you know, taking stock of what's happening in your community. How does it impact you, your family, um, at an individual level? And what can we do about these issues? I think Xanax is whack. So I think activism against it is, is dope. I'm never trying to preach to somebody or act like I have all the answers, like I have shit figured out. More so, I just try to be inclusive and bring people around and show them something else, you know? I feel like you know what it is, like why it's such a problem, because a lot of kids don't know what they want to do with their life. So I, my advice for any kid is like, that's going through these problems with drugs at that too, find what really makes you happy. I seen my homeboy on it one day. I had not taken his annex that day. I don't know why. He in my car and he just, drooling, falling out, eyes rolling in the back of the head. I'm like, this is how I look? This is how everybody's seeing me? Oh, no, no, I don't want to be, I ain't trying to look like that. When I think of memories withdrawing, I, I cringe. Seizures suck, like, I can't fathom the words to put together because like, that shit really sucks. Like, that's the most horrible pain I've ever felt in the world. I have so much stories on, about being on Zan, like, talking to, talking to girls, all type of shit, like, I done fell asleep on some, on some pussy, like, a bunch, a lot. I fell asleep on a lot of girls, a lot of them. Sorry about that. I done fell asleep on a lot of girls. Like That's the, the absolute problem with it, you know what I'm saying? It, it, make, it makes you a zombie, it, it, it will ruin your life. That's what made me stop, for real. I had to admit it to myself that I was a drug addict. It was the hardest shit I ever did in my entire life. I felt like I had the flu, I couldn't talk to anybody, in and out of depression, crying. So you know, the thing is, is you get feeling and emotion back. It's another thing I love about it. Like. I was just so like this, like, uh, you know what I mean? Like a win, whether it was a platinum plaque or a fucking artist that I had just broken that now the world loves, like those things just was like, all right. But yeah, it was, it was really hard. And that's why kids don't get sober off the shit. It's really easier said than done, 100%. That's why I'll never judge a person if they constantly keep relapsing. I didn't relapse like God knows how many fucking times, you feel me? I'm not the most perfect person, but I am definitely trying to stray away from it. I know addiction's super hard. A lot of people, you know, battle it their whole lives and can't kick it, but I was able to, at least for, for now, and I'm gonna continue to push to, to be sober. Work. No. No. Work. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no doubt.